So the thoughts, the words and the actions have to be aligned. So if you have to manifest any of your goals and bring them closer to you in your life, your intention has to be clear. Okay. Manifestation is not about wishing and wanting. It's all about taking the action. That's when all the dots connected for me in a flash. And then I realized, how is it that I was able to manifest everything in my life so easily? How was it happening? How did I do it? 21 days, the first neural network is formed. In 40 days, we can make a habit. And in 66 days, there is a structural change in the brain. So that is the amount of time you need to repeat it. Everything that you need to pick yourself up, to lift yourself up, is already inbuilt inside of you. You don't need anything from outside to help you feel better. And every time you go inside, you will change your neural pathways. I have clients all over the world and I, I see the girls struggling with finding the voice within, right? So it's very important to... Sloane. Hi. Welcome to Mumbai's Millennial Mind. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. No, not at all. I'm <laughs> so excited to speak to you. Even the five minutes we've spoken before off camera, I'm, I'm learning so much. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. But for Same people here. who don't know who you are, tell me a little bit about yourself. So um, I started my coaching journey rather late in my life at 48. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very interesting for me to embark on this. But I was always very intrigued by the human brain. And I think I started studying it many, many years ago. So yoga and meditation was pretty much a, a part of my life while we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I happened to attend a workshop by uh, Jose Silva on mind training, and I think I was 34 at that time, and that's when all the dots connected for me in a flash. And then I realized, how is it that I was able to manifest everything in my life so easily? How was it happening? How did I do it? So, uh, and that's when I realized that I was actually using my brain and I was talking to myself in a manner which was affirmations, I didn't know that. I was always very clear on what my destination was. My intentions were very sharp and uh, that's how I realized and since then I've been studying, neuroscience has been a passion, absolute passion for me. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, studying our uh, ancient wisdom text was again a part of my growing up life. And at 48, I started my journey. So to wow. all elderly people, anybody over 40, anybody over 35, if you think it is too late to start, it's not. You can start whenever you like. I it's okay. That. It's okay. <laughs> what were you doing before that? I was a PR professional. I was a journalist. Wow. I, in my, I, I studied, uh, did my bachelor's, master's and I'm full in geography and was an environmental activist in my earlier days and Jungle Jeevan Bachao Yatras were a part of my life. Wow. So it was uh, a lot of environmental uh, activism that was a part of my college days and a part of my early career. Amazing. And, uh, but writing was something that always came easy to me. And writing my first guided journal now, almost finished, working on an interesting book as well. So I think journalism and PR, so I didn't have any education in it. Mm -hmm. And so I literally rewired my brain to do wherever I was. I was able to, uh, I think, adapt to the country. I had small children. We were in the Gulf in those days. Yeah. And um, I said, yeah, I know how to write. I think I can be a journalist. And I just was a freelance journalist, started off my career. It was, it was very interesting. I loved it. Mm -hmm. So I reinvented myself many times. But I think this is the final resting place. This is my purpose. This is what I was born to do. I just didn't know it. And how and did you uh, find that out? Uh, so it was circumstantial, I think, in many ways. And I was studying for everything that I teach today. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I think I've been studying. I was preparing myself for this role in my life mm. for the last 35 years. I just didn't know it. And that's okay, right? Like, I always say, you know, that you don't have to have all your ducks in a row when you start, you know? You just have to start and mm -hmm. you don't have to know all the answers and it's okay. So you just have to have the conviction to take one step forward with the wisdom, with the confidence that the one after it will reveal itself to you at the right time. That's and so that is enough. It is enough. But there will be right? people watching and listening to this that will say, okay, that's, that's all very well and good to think so positively and think everything will work itself out. But what if it doesn't? It you know? won't. It won't. It will not. 
that's why you got to fall down mm. and then you got to stand up but if you stay uh, how quickly you get up will determine how far you will go and there is nobody in this world today who can say that i have won every time mm -hmm. we are all professional failures <laughs> we have tried everything the best business minds make mistakes the best filmmakers make mistakes best actresses actors choose the wrong movies mm -hmm. and that's okay it's okay it will happen right you just got to get up because if you stay down when you fall you're going to bleed and you're going to bleed heavy mm. and that is when your self confidence gets literally sucked out of you so for you to fall down okay it happened i made a mistake mm -hmm. get up go back again go back again keep going back again and again and again But and it is inevitable that you will find a way Mm. Don't stay down. Don't stay down. Get up. Resilience and persistence are attributes that everybody wants to have. And as you're speaking, I'm feeling inspired by you in this moment to think, okay, if something happened, I have your voice in my head that's telling me to keep going. But there will be people who are listening and watching this that will say to me, look, I just can't do it anymore. And I've been hit down so many times. I've been knocked down over and over again. I've tried my best. in that moment where you've been knocked down how do you allow yourself to get back up because normally if you've been hurt by something or something's drastically gone wrong and you've invested all your savings into you know a business or whatever it is in that moment you can think i just i've had enough yeah how so, will i get up so that sound in the mind which tells you that it's over there are certain tools that you can use right and uh Ideally you should use something that you can look at because the neurons behind the eyes that go into the brain are the strongest. So ideally I always tell my clients that on your phone because that is a device that is always available to us, right? Uh there is a certain there is a message that you can write for yourself. Mm. And you can put that as your wallpaper. That's mm. the first thing that you can do, right? I am enough. I am worthy. I am okay. Right? Mm. That's the first thing that you can do. The second tool which is very powerful is to use your awareness to be able to put yourself immediately in a place of gratitude. Mm. We do know that the frequency of gratitude is the highest, right? And uh, the minute you everything is lost, but you're still breathing. Whoa. Good job. You still have food on your plate. the ways in which you can pick yourself up right when you fall down because you will fall it is inevitable mm -hmm. there is no one person who is successful in everything that they do there are no ideas that are going to work every time so uh the first way to be able to pick yourself up is to do you know keep something on your phone that is easily accessible to you mm -hmm. that you can look at you try and see if you can focus on three things right so try and use three affirmations that work for you mm -hmm. i am enough I am grateful and I deserve whatever it is that you feel you deserve. Mm -hmm. That way you'll be able to change your mental dialogue very quickly, right? Uh the second one is the frequency of gratitude. The frequency of gratitude has the ability to bring us back into the present moment because please remember our brain is hardwired to take us to the past. You will when you fall you will always be reminded of all the moments that you fell, right? Can you go back in time and change anything? There is no human being, there is no machine that has to date been invented mm. that can go back and change anything in the past. Right? The future is unknown. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Even you don't know. The best of the best of the astrologers, the algorithms, the AIs could not predict that COVID was coming. Mm. Nobody could tell, but it happened. it happened we all coped with it we all dealt with it and we restarted and we went back mm. right so you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so where's the magic the magic is in the present moment so in the present moment it is your job to be able to find courage to lift yourself up be grateful mm. for every just be grateful that you still have your legs to get up yeah. there are people who don't even have that right you have a roof over your head you have food on your table and you have somebody who you can call 
and who can tell you that it's okay buddy I got you mm. right if you have just that one person also it is enough if you don't have that one person also and you're feeling completely alone completely isolated there is the divine force that protects all of us and we do know that uh, when we are aware of the fact that uh, there is somebody who's guiding us there is somebody who's supporting us there is a force that exists in the universe that is has uh, just has his watchful eye on you mm. just that one feeling is enough to flip your neural pathways in 5 to 10 seconds you can change your you can change your pathways right it's very fast wow. it doesn't take that long and uh, just a simple if you just hold your hands like this and you just turn your forefinger to the your index finger to the middle finger hold this here hold this here do this and do this yeah take a deep breath in yeah yeah it's like this just put it to the next one yeah put this one to, to this here. one yeah okay and here and here yeah 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 good job okay you did it now just take a deep breath in close it close your close your fingers close your fingers like this and exhale one more time take another deep breath in and exhale just one more time three is a magical number and exhale an easy breath in and an easy breath out mm. and immediately you will be able to change your state of mind right wow. so everything that you need to pick yourself up to lift yourself up is already inbuilt inside of you you don't need anything from outside to help you feel better and every time you go inside you will change your neural pathways you will feel different an easy breath in and an easy breath out just wow. just do that and you will feel better just close your eyes yeah just close your eyes do a mild meditation and just just focus on your breath if your mind goes somewhere else it's okay just bring it back mm. just bring it back reconnect with the world that exists within as it is way more powerful than the world that exists outside you're so right that gratitude changes everything it's one of the reasons i put it in my planner because it really does right. and i remember seeing this meme on instagram and it said when you're ill and your nose is blocked how grateful are you that your nostrils like allow you to breathe, breathe. and i think it was 2 days ago where i was thinking about that and i was like i'm so grateful for my nostrils hey. today it's such a random thought But you know it's really true that you know taking a moment out to realize everything you're grateful for even in the last few days I've been feeling so tired honestly I've been thinking I am exhausted I don't know how I'm going to do the next one and every day when I wake up I remind myself you chose to do this you dreamt of doing this you wanted to do this and in an instant I can be okay about it you can it. be okay with it even though I'm really so tired okay. yeah. in an instant when I remember how lucky I am to get to do this and how one day I would dream of ever doing a international podcast and, and I'm doing are. it and, and I think that are. it's so easy for us to think we're not lucky or we're not grateful and an affirmation I say every single day is i am so lucky and good things always happen to me because i genuinely believe that i'm so lucky and i remember someone telling me the story that if you rewire your brain to always think you're lucky every small thing you'll notice in your life will you'll think it's because you're lucky Absolutely. and therefore you'll notice all these small nuances and it'll naturally Absolutely. make you feel happier and that is what the neuroscience of manifestation really is mm -hmm. so if you have to manifest any of your goals and bring them closer to you in your life your intention has to be clear Okay. Manifestation is not about wishing and wanting. It's all about taking the action. It's about doing because our brain is hardwired to keep us into la la land to think that oh, if I just wish it, if I just think it, it's going to happen. No, it doesn't work like that. It's the thinking, right? You got to get your thinking work first. You then need to be able to build a language, put it into words that have meaning for you, that are emotionally meaningful for you. Mm -hmm. and then you need to take action so the thoughts the words and the actions have to be aligned and that is when it's like a combination lock you know you know you put those three <laughs> numbers you got to get the numbers right because right. then the the universe will open up and then your frequency with the universe will be correct 
and that is when you will actually begin to bring into your life that which you want and the clearer you are in the goals that I, I remember there was a client who came up to me and said coach I want to learn manifestation teach me how to manifest yes. and this and that and I'm like I I'm happy to do that but can we first have go one step backward and have a conversation on what is it that you want to manifest in your life because there's no point in learning how to how to manifest if you don't know what you have to manifest in your life and that comes from setting goals yes right and the minute you become clear about where you're headed the brain is a goal seeking machine it works like google maps <laughs> if you don't put the destination you are not going to get there and your specificity of the destination is key and then you just keep taking steps forward with the conviction that maybe perhaps you might reach whether you will reach or not is also not in your control you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow right you don't know about the traffic jams along the way mm. you don't know how you're going to get hit you don't know where you'll have to stop you don't know if you might be you you might run out of fuel right mm. so how you're going to manage and that fuel is your energy right that's that energy that comes from within so journaling is one of the most powerful ways of ensuring that your the dump of dopamine comes in the morning and then it sustains you during the day so that you are continuously able to stay focused and prioritize what is it that you want what are the goals that otherwise the brain cannot prioritize mm. right so true so it's going to go all over the place it's so true it's literally why everything i was speaking about is here i can't is wait to give right? you one um i want to talk there's so many things you just said that i feel like I, I every minute i'm like no i need to ask you this next i'm just gonna move my questions because i don't even need them anymore <laughs> i th this you talked about manifesting goal setting and then you talked around affirmations okay so there's there's three different things there I want to first start off with goal setting because it's sure. my favorite topic to talk about and you're yeah, you're an expert. Me too. Me too. <laughs> How me too. do we set our goals correctly? Okay. So uh, the weakest link is where you need to start from first, right? Okay. And everything is interconnected. There are about 7 or 8 parts of our life that need to stay in balance and the first one is you. Your health needs to be good. From mm -hmm. within you need to be strong. you need to sleep on time right first thing and because uh, dr moran serves research gives us so much of evidence that what is it that makes us be happy what is it that gives us peace of mind mm. five things number one have a good night's sleep most important have very strong relationships be always be mindful that you're guided by the divine force right focus a little bit on your health move your body when mm. the body moves the brain absolutely grooves right and if you are spending time with your relationships and you're making them come complete mm. you're going to feel good mm. so the first thing in goal setting i would say is focus on yourself if your machinery inside if your brain's working good your body is working good you will be able to take action otherwise you will find excuses So mm. take care of your food, take care of your nutrition, take care of your exercise. If both of these things are in sync with one another, neurochemically you will be balanced. Your circadian rhythm will be in balance. You yeah. will be able to jump out of bed, have a cold water shower, go for your run, do your journaling, do your meditation and you will be starting your day. Mm. You'll get that dump in the morning, right? So take care of yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't really take care of others. Yeah. If you don't have if you're not strong like they say in the airports in the airplanes right always mask. put the oxygen mask first on yourself right because if you're strong you'll be able to make a difference and create an impact in this world first take care of yourself number 2 take care of your relationships there are three relationships that are fixed in time mm -hmm. the one with your parents the one with your siblings and the one with your children right it's not going to change ever it's always going to be the same You have a divorce your child will always be your child your parents are always going to be your parents your brothers and sisters will always be your brothers and sisters so we are wired to and the maximum amount of conflict and stress that i find is usually in these three relationships and once these are in place and you've made a uh, in your mind you've set a kind of a, a rhythm for yourself mm -hmm. to be at peace with these relationships for you to then focus on yourself is going because the maximum pain is also going to come to you from these three mm. it's inevitable it's inevitable and 
we, we are all programmed, right? We are all programmed at a very young age. Zero to seven is when the entire programming of the subconscious mind happens. You learn your relationship with money, your relationship with love, your relationship with a business professional that you are going to become. They're all set in your childhood. Wow. And they come to you from the, your parents. They are programmed into all of us. Indians are, unfortunately, for the last three generations, we have been programmed to obey. Girls have been op programmed to obey. The freedom that we have is, is, is limited. There are so many different, I would say, there's, there's so many different limitations that, mm. that we have, right? And in the US, it's different, right? Europe is different. Australia is similar a little bit, but I, I have clients all over the world and I, I see the girls struggling with finding the voice within, right? So it's very important to overcome your relationships and have a good relationship with yourself. That's really important, you know, because nobody cares about you. You gotta care about yourself, mm. right? And the day you start caring about yourself and the day you start paying attention to that voice in your head, the game changes. It literally changes. You gotta be with yourself for the rest of your life, right? You're gonna be with you till the end of the time. So you gotta rein this in and you gotta control that voice in your mind. And the minute you do that, the game changes. Number three, if you're a working professional, pay a lot of attention on your goals regarding your work. Be as specific as possible. And um, love is important. Love is very important in our lives, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's uh, good if you can have a few goals around love as well. So as starters, I would say have a good, just to recap quickly, have a good relationship with yourself. Have mm -hmm. a goal for yourself, right? How is it that you're becoming a better person every day? Yeah. How is it that you're unlocking your own potential every day? How is it that you're rewiring yourself every day? Mm. Sync your mind, body and your soul, right? Because the soul has memory and you need to be able to have a good relationship with that yeah focus on yourself first self care is not being selfish girls are taught that if you are paying attention on yourself you're a mm. selfish girl right no it's not okay it's not okay you take mm. care of yourself right take care of your relationships mm -hmm. with your parents your siblings if you have a child take care of that yeah it's mm -hmm. important to have friends har ek friend zaruri hota hai Right? Mm. You need that one friend in your life, you know. And girls and women talk a lot to women, right? We, we have that requirement. Yeah. Men don't have it. Women have that requirement. Yeah? Your three close friends, three timelines of your life, you're in a good space. Focus a little bit about the work that you do. Mm. It's very important for women to be standing on their own two feet. It's very important for women to be financially independent. It gives them the confidence, right? It gives you confidence to be able to speak your own voice and stand in your own power. It does that. Mm. It is the truth. Yes. So do it. Whatever you do, just focus on using your intellect to do whatever it is that you love to do. It doesn't mm. matter. It does not matter. If you have small children, I have coach, I have small children, I can't do this, I can't do that. I have these dreams, I couldn't do it. And I always tell them, I said, it's okay. Mm. But can you take out two hours for yourself and study, right? Can you take out two hours for yourself and use this time while your children are small to learn something? Can you do that? Mm. At least you can do that. You can learn online. We have the universities are all, all the, the world's best universities are, are available to you. Yeah. So study, learn. You never know when you will need it, mm. right? And you don't, it's not even that you might need it, but even if you come from a, a well-to-do family and you're extremely privileged, it's okay. It's all right. Maybe you can use your talent. Maybe you can go to a not-for-profit and manage their accounts. Will that give you peace of mind? And that's okay too. Yeah. That's all right too. There's nothing wrong with that. And then of course, please love yourselves, love other people. Love is very important. And hold your freedom close to you, mm. right? Freedom again, very high frequency, very high. The minute you take a person's freedom away, the mind goes into a toss. The mind is in stress, right? We love having a, nobody likes being told what to do, period. Get used to it. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes it, right? Everybody loves their freedom. You take a person's freedom away, you're literally taking away their life, 
right? And control, oh, we love love to control other people. Mm. So a lot of my work with my clients and in the workshops that I do is to teach people how to let go of this need to control other people. And how do we do that? uh, You have to get focused on where you are going. Right, because the other people on the side, like I I love to quote Winston Churchill, you know, while you're on your way to your goals, right, um, there'll be dogs that will be barking on the left and the right. If you stop to throw stones at every dog that barks, you will never reach your destination. So just let the dogs bark. Oh, wow, I love that. And you go forward towards your goals. And you move forward because the brain is a goal seeking machine. And in our ancient uh, texts, the clarity with which you see your goal will determine the precision and the speed with which you will move towards it. And in our ancient texts, goal setting was uh, spoken about. And so Duracharya is the teacher of the Kaurav and the Pandra brothers. And uh, he puts a wooden bird on the tree. And he calls everybody one by one and he just asks them one question. And the question is, what do you see? Yudhishthir gives some spiel about this is the distance, this is mathematical, if I hold my bow and arrow at this page, that's how it will reach. And uh, Bhim is like, I'm feeling hungry, I don't get food here, there are mangoes over here, I want to eat the mangoes. Nakul and Sadev, Duryodhan is on his own trip and he's like, you don't call me first, you always favor the Pandav brothers, you don't call me. He doesn't let anybody shoot. He takes the bow and arrow back from them. And then Arjun is standing in the corner and he calls him, Mm. Arjun, what do you see? Arjun says, I see the eye of the bird. And he says, shoot. And that's the reason Arjun, in all time, has been the best archer. He could see his goal. His focus was complete. All the surround sound that was going on, he just silenced it like that. And he stood there and he shot Mm. and he hit the eye of the bird. And that is goal setting for us. He could see the goal, he was focused, he was clear, whether it will, and that's when he cast the arrow forward. The others were distracted by the other dogs that were barking. So you keep your eye buddy on where you're going, right? And you just take, keep on going, keep on going. Just keep swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. You, you're, you're telling me so many different things that I'm like, okay, I, I don't know how to even <laughs> dissect it all. I'm sure everyone at home is like, ask this question, ask this question. But you're, you're just it's telling me so much that I'm like, oh my God, okay, let me go back. <laughs> I would just like to help as many people as possible. And if, if somebody so can take amazing. something away, Somebody no, finds really. an answer sometimes in something that they read, something that they hear. You never know. You mm. never know. I was in a session the other day with a client and we, she was a, she's a startup founder and she was struggling with reaching that profitability and right. they were making money. They were already in five years about to scale. And one mistake that they were both making was that um, uh, they were not paying themselves salaries. Right? right. So everything that they were making, they mm-hmm. were putting it back into the business. And uh, I just told her one thing, you know, like how people take away something from a session, you know. And I just, from lack, you cannot create abundance. From lack, you will create lack. Right? So for you to feel abundant is very important. So from lack, you cannot create abundance. Mm -hmm. So from abundance, you create abundance. And the reason I was sharing this with you is that after... Uh, we were done with our conversation I asked her okay what are you going away with Mm. and the first thing she said was that uh, coach when you said that uh, I need to feel abundant if I have to create more abundance I think that is what I'm going away with because I've not been paying myself I've not been rewarding myself Mm. handsomely over the last four to five years and I'm now feeling as if I've done nothing and even though we have reached profitability but I am still not feeling abundant and I think what I need to start doing right now is I need to start winning, right? Yeah. Every time you, you have to win every day. After every one and a half, two hours, you need to have a, 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 a sentence in your mind that will help you to win. Because dopamine 
uh, the drips of dopamine have to come during their day. So true. And an indication to you, the, the gut brain is the second brain, right? So the any time in your uh, in, during the day, you get a sinking feeling in the mm -hmm. in the pit of your stomach. You need to really pay attention to it. Hundred million cells in the brain, three hundred and fifty million cells in the gut, and they are the ones that are releasing dopamine, and the one that controls our pleasure and motivation center wow. and serotonin, which is actually helping us to feel good. So the minute you are uh, feeling that lump in mm -hmm. your stomach, you got to pay attention. Ideally, just take a pause and rest. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Take a pause. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Drink a little bit of water. Right. Just drink some water. Not and coffee. <laughs> not. Uh, yeah. That's me. I'm literally just yeah. like. <gasps> <laughs> and just try and see if you have a window, and if you can look the furthest away possible from a window, it helps us to feel better. Because, like I said. The neural circuitry behind, behind the eyes is the strongest. Why? And the minute you look very, very far away, you realize, oh my God, there's so much. I'm just a speck of grain in this ocean of sand. Because wow. the feelings of fear are also triggered by our eyes. So for example, if I shut your eyes right now, yes. and over here I keep a cobra snake, right? you're not going to have any reaction mm -hmm. because you don't know mm -hmm. that this is here, mm -hmm. right? The minute you open your eyes and if you have a file that says that this is dangerous, Correct. your body is going to begin to feel different, mm. right? But if you happen to be a snake lover, you're just going to look at that snake and you're like, hey, I know what <laughs> this is, Yeah. right? You'll feel comfortable. Mm. So your programming and all your files and folders that carry those little imagery about what you can do and what you can't do are going to control the feeling and the, the anxiety or the stress or the happiness or the joy or the freedom or the gra gra gratitude, feeling of being just being grateful that you carry in your body. So the vocabulary of the mind is words and so the vocabulary of the body is feelings. So you, you mentioned earlier with the ages between zero and seven are the, are the ones that prime you. Yeah. And what you've just said now is, you know, the vocabulary is important. Very to, important. To impact your actions. Absolutely. But how do you change that? Let's say between zero and seven, I've been given this vocabulary that I can't do very much. I should never take risks. I'm scared of everything. I shouldn't speak up, whatever it is. How do I start to change that as I'm going older? Because my default reaction would be, Absolutely let's say I put in my, you know, I'm, I'm scared of, you know, taking risks, okay? Anytime a risk comes to me, I'm thinking, oh, I can't do it. Absolutely. So kind of like the snake example, how do I program myself to, first of all, recognize that that's not what I want. I love snakes. <laughs> and secondly, how do I then become comfortable with them? Right. So uh, the brain learns by repetition of information. That's the only way it learns, right? Uh, 21 days, the first neural network is formed. In 40 days, we can make a habit. And in 66 days, there is a structural change in the brain. So that is the amount of time you need to repeat it. You need to create a language. So the subconscious mind we know is the most powerful part of our brain, yes. right? And the subconscious mind understands a very specific language, right? It only lives in the present tense, right? So, it, it, and it is literal. So the minute you have said, I cannot do it, okay, fine, you can't do it. Yeah, our beliefs create our reality, don't they? You make up your own shit. You make up your own beliefs. And then you go looking in the world for evidence to match exactly what you believe and that's what limiting beliefs are all about, mm -hmm. right? So journaling is a very powerful tool to be able to change the vocabulary in your mind. Yeah. Always write in the present tense. Yes. Always be positive. Present continuous tense is, is so important. Always the words that follow I, the words that follow I am, follow you. Yeah? So when I'm unstoppable, great. My brain will give me evidence that I'm unstoppable. It's my favorite right? song by Sia, by the way. Yes, unstoppable. Yes, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> right? So you got to program yourself every day for the rest of your life. So true. Right? So you can't stop journaling. You mm. cannot stop building a pattern in your mind. And if you don't create that vocabulary for yourself, and if you think you're going to run in default of being 
positive thinking is good but it is not enough it's just not enough it doesn't work right you got to take the action to be able to manifest that in your life a reflection the four steps to journaling that i teach first reflect please take this yes <laughs> good job right <laughs> so you do a reflection and you be grateful for everything that went on well in your life number 2 you rewire remember where did i fall from grace yesterday because if you don't remember it and you don't create an opposite program for it mm -hmm. you will create a freaking loop yeah and then you're going to be stuck in that loop reflect rewire number 3 focus prioritize on what is it that is your top priority of the day and if you write it using the triple p approach present tense personal pres and uh, positive it is possible that during the day you will keep your focus on it mm. and during the day in early in the morning so the 4 to 6 is the brahma muhurtam that you need to be able to catch if you can if you have you can't do it it's okay what does that do mean what's for, right for people for who don't know what that is so uh, between 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning our ability to connect with ourselves is the highest mm -hmm. right and if during that time you take one hour for yourself the golden hour technique and you just do a meditation do a journaling and then go out for a walk right exercise do your exercise whatever works for you mm. so between 4 and 6 which is where uh, the 5 am club right yes so um, if you're part of the 5 am club it's it's a good thing but follow your routine yeah mm. because if i mean there are people in the hospitality sector you know i mean there are people who are doctors yes. right they come home i mean there there are there are celebrities there there are people who work in the night that's okay mm. it's all right you have a deadline right it's okay sleep 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 for 6 to 8 hours at least <laughs> then because when you sleep your brain has the ability to rest to renew and to rejuvenate because when your 56 trillion cells are rejuvenated mm. then how you turn up for yourself and for the world is a different ball game it's so true and then your energy during the day will be sustained right because you cannot work on 3 to 4 hours of sleep for you can do it for one day you can do it for two days you can't do it for 10 days mm -hmm. you can't do it for 20 days you will collapse yes your body is not designed to work like that mm -hmm. so you have to rest and the, in the morning when you if you can do it if you can't it's okay yeah don't stress it's all right wake up with the time you wake up you do your golden hour at that time and mm. that's okay too but journal do your meditation and go for a walk you do these three things right you're home everyone i've spoken to this podcast has taught me about meditation yes. and i've always found it really difficult but in the last two days i think because i'm not sleeping very well and i think because i'm tired i've been waking up really anxious like very very anxious like that hole in my stomach and there's no reason for me to be because the first thought in my brain is why are you feeling anxious you're here you're happy you've got loads of guests coming life is amazing and for some reason i still feel really sick and i've been using this device called sensate which is like vibrates on my chest but it allows me to breathe but over the last few days everyone has just told me just focus on your breath focus on your breath focus on your breath and it's really really helped yeah but as you were speaking there were loads of things that you've just said and you've said do this do this do this but don't worry if you can't do it it's okay it's okay but a lot of people who are watching may think well you're saying it's okay if i don't do it so does that don't mean don't do what so you know you said wake up at if you can wake up at 4 to 6 yeah do it yeah. if you can do journaling do it if you can do this then do it your approach is very much do this if you can right right and not you have to do this to be successful no. you have to do this no. to be a lot of people no. with that say okay well then if i'm forgiving myself all the time for not hitting my goals then i've nothing to be proud of right so you said if your goal is to i don't know do this and you don't reach all of it it's okay it's okay why why yeah. do you say that because that feeling is way more powerful than the one in which you are continuously reminding yourself that you are unsuccessful mm. or that you have not been able to achieve right because the brain doesn't love that the default mode negativity bias is so dominant in our brain because because that voice boom is going to come up in your head all the time mm. right so you have to be able to hack it the ratio is 1 is to 5 one negative thought in our mind is so powerful 
that it takes five positive thoughts to just silence this voice this much. Otherwise, boom, that's the way it's going to come up. Okay. That's what research tells us, right? So it, it is it is powerful because the brain is desi it's designed to keep you alive. That's mm. its job description. That's its KRA. The alarm is ringing in the morning. Your brain will tell you, hey, go back to sleep. Mm. It will. You have five seconds. In five seconds, if you can make that voice go down, right, you will be able to wake up and turn up for yourself. Otherwise, your default is, shut it, it's okay, I'll go to sleep. Yes. Yes, it'll happen. You have 10 snooze buttons, <laughs> you have a backup, you're already rigging yourself for failure. Right? If you have a flight to catch, it's at 5 o'clock in the morning, will you not get up and reach the airport at 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, whatever you're, of course you will. Mm -hmm. How are you doing it then? Right? Just because you're going for a holiday? You think you can get up and catch a flight? Catch a flight for yourself every day because you're worth it. Because if you don't catch your flight, who's going to do it? Nobody's coming for anybody. Nobody's oh my God, coming. I love you. <laughs> I feel like you're coming. coming back home with me. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there are so, ma so many things that you've said and, and one of the things that I think people will, will grasp onto is this idea of rewiring your thoughts, right? And reframing your thoughts because for a lot of people, you, you mentioned this point, and, and I've never heard anyone talk about it. The relationship with your parents, the relationship with your children, and the relationship with yourself. Siblings. Siblings, sorry. It's fixed, three. right? It's fixed. Can't change it. How do you learn to let go if you've been hurt by those three relationships? Because mm -hmm. you said they're the ones that face the most problems. These three, yeah. First of all, why do they face the most problems? And how do you learn to let go if you've been hurt by them? Because you're right, they can never change, they can never go. They're not going to go, right? So the parents is the most difficult, mm. right? Because uh, the way, the things that they have said to us, and uh, especially if a father or a mother have themselves gone through struggles and they themselves have been beaten up by their parents, mm. mentally, mm. Uh, verbally. Mm. Uh, they tend to carry that pattern and then they pass it on to their children, mm -hmm. right? So my suggestion to my people who come and see me is that uh, where your parents are concerned, especially uh, if you can, don't be unkind. Yeah, be kind. Just be kind and just be loving. Don't try and change them because you can't. Mm. You can't. If you can make peace with yourself, mm -hmm. with the fact that these are the kind of, as you grow older, you might have realizations that these are all the things my parents did wrong. They spoke yes. to me like this. They spoke to me like this. Yeah. They continue to do it, you know, to date. And uh, make peace with it. Whatever they knew, whatever best they could do, they did. How do you make peace with right. it though? Uh, whatever they did at that point of time, that is what they knew how to do. And that was their environment. And that's okay. Right? Forgive. Let it go. Make peace. Make peace with your parents. Number two, learn to see if you can forgive them. Mm -hmm. And don't take it on. Don't take them on. Because especially if you have parents older, mm -hmm. 65, 70 plus, don't try and change them. It is not going to happen, right? It is their journey. Your journey is to turn up just as being loving and kind. And that's it. Whatever the value system of your family is mm. and uh, not passing any judgment on it, but whatever works for you. Mm. If you are at peace living away, stay away, right? If you're at peace making that one phone call in one week, make it. If you're at peace at texting and don't want to talk, you can do a WhatsApp, do a WhatsApp, right? Because it will heal. In time, it will heal. Mm. Keep that as a goal for yourself. Mm. See if you can write down, I'm so grateful. I'm at peace with my relationships with mom and dad. So it's true. okay. Whatever it is that mama did with me mm. is the best that she knew at that point of time. Mm. See to it that you don't end up making the same mistakes yeah. because otherwise, the way you have been programmed, if you have been hurt and you're still carrying it, unfortunately, uh, you'll pass it on to your children. Three months, the baby's in the womb, the baby starts picking up the energy of the mother. Really? Three months. Three months. If you've seen an ultrasound, you'll see the, the spinal cord and the brain has already been made. 
the baby is why why do we say you know are you going to be a mom you know mm. just be happy why do we say put a picture of a happy baby and you know look at it in olden days they used to do that right really yeah they used to say that keep looking at a happy baby your baby will also be like that it's because of the eyes the eyes are very powerful that's the imagery that is going back yeah wow but if you're loving and you're telling your baby that mama and papa we we, we are so excited that you're coming into our life and mm -hmm. we are waiting to love you we are waiting to welcome you into our world mm -hmm. mama has made time for you papa has enough resources to take care of you right so the baby is feeling loved mm -hmm. already how am i going to work i'm not going to be able to do this how can i buy this i can't buy that i don't have this i don't have a maid how is this going to happen how is that going to happen Mm -hmm. The baby gets a message that you don't want the baby. You're not ready for the baby. And what will happen to the baby? The, the baby feels unwanted, right? And that will carry through in their life. Sometimes the babies are are born with they're, they're very clingy. They feel the mother's going to go away, right? There was a time when I remember uh, there was a lady who came to see me, and uh, her daughter was always crying, and you know she was. just had a terrible headache all the time and i was talking to her and we went a little deep into the conversation and next time she came she just uh, i happened to bring her daughter along and they were always fighting mm. both of them and the minute they would fight this small girl 3 3 and a half years old she's listening right she would just go to her room and you know she would start crying and saying my head is spinning my head is spinning and she'd start puking and you know stomach pain and and uh, when i was talking to her she said uh, i said what is the benefit of this to you how does it help you she said that then mama comes and sits with me mama puts her hand on me and mama is sitting with me so mm. this was her coping mechanism of separating the yeah. loud voice that she was hearing right wow. and that was her way she coped with it and so when i flipped it back to both of them i said you two are the ones that that is the way she's coping because she realizes that when she's vomiting and when she's got a headache and when she's crying one of you comes to sit with her mm. and then you stop fighting and the voice goes down children are scared wow. of two things loud noises and falling down a child is born only with these two fears no other fear all other fears i learned we learn the fear of failure we learn the fear of rejection we learn the fear of criticism we learn the fear of being judged by the people log kya kahenge all of this nobody is thinking about you you are only thinking about yourself nobody is interested in you so true nobody <laughs> you are the one you know who is continuously thinking that oh my god what will mm. this one say do a test i, I told somebody you no know, once and then i said no you know coach i can't do this you know this one will say this this one will say that mm -hmm. I said really do a test. I said I gave her an exercise. I said what is the time that you were most I was at this party and you're not going to believe what happened and she gave me the incident. Why? Right. I said okay. Now go back to this person who was with you. Mm -hmm. Ask them if they remember what happened. What happened? Do this test. She said coach she was asking me what am I talking about? I said really. You remember it. Nobody else remembers it. Everybody is their own movies running in their head no so they are thinking about themselves all the time it's so true they are not thinking about you i learned this thing called the spotlight effect right and whenever something happens we believe that there's a spotlight right on, on us right but here's right. the thing right. there's a spotlight on everyone yes and everyone's uh, focused on their own light <laughs> Exactly. Not looking at your light. Exactly. So when something has gone wrong, we believe that everyone is looking right. at us, and it's it's heightened, right. and everyone can see all of our mistakes. But right. everyone's so focused in their own world and their own spotlight, they don't even notice yours. So we are the leading cast in our own movie. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> you also spoke um, so much through this whole journey around relating everything you're talking about to ancient times, ancient wisdom, the Mahabharata you referenced. Talk to me about that. Why have you linked the two? So while I was studying everything in neuroscience and I was learning about how the brain works I was learning about manifestation goal setting falling down getting mm -hmm. up and everything went back for me to our ancient texts because in ancient texts there was a lot of all of these um I would say stories were written already to help us mm. to keep going 
right? There's a story about goal setting in which you said, okay, if I don't meet my goals, you asked me early on in the conversation, yeah. how do I keep going, mm. right? In the Bhagavatam, there's a story again about how Arjun is out in the forest and he is standing over there and he sees that on every tree, right? He was just practicing out on the outskirts of the forest. And there, there is an arrow which is at a bullseye. And uh, th there is one arrow which is like, for example, if this is the tree trunk, there's one arrow which is over here at the edge. And there's a bullseye on that as well. And he's like, shit, how did this happen? He tried it a couple of times, you know, you're like, shit, I'll also yeah. do it, you know. He's like, how did this happen, you know? He tried, he couldn't do it. He got damn hassle. He said, like, who did this? I am supposed to be the best archer in the world. So he goes to the village chief and he asks him, I want to meet the person who has done all of these. One sprightly little young boy comes out and uh, he asked him that, uh, hey, you did all this? He said, yeah, I did it, yeah. He said, that one too? He said, yeah. He said, okay, fine, show it to me. He said, oh, that one. Actually, what I did is, I tried it, I couldn't do it. So then what I did is that I shot it first and then I went and drew a bullseye around it. And then I said, oh, I'm on top of the world. I won. He's like, shit, but that's cheating. Right? He said, uh, it might be cheating to you, but when I look at it, it gives me motivation to keep trying. Wow. Right? So you have to rig your brain and that is, e that is exactly what neuroplasticity and neuroscience is telling us about. Right? Those little drips of dopamine have to come mm. throughout the day, which is where the goal setting. Right? So true. And that is how you rig yourself to get up and to keep winning all the time. You have to win. Right? Micro wins, mm. which is where the habits so the micro wins yes. and the micro habits help us to keep going. And this is where it's so important to have a task list because every time I tick off something, yeah, it's you dopamine made it. hit. It's a dopamine hit. And so right. when you have a long task list and you're ticking it off, yeah. every hour, every half an hour, yeah, you're time you blocking. Better. It's so, better. so key. Exactly. And that sound that goes along with it, so 432 hertz, is a sound that our brain realizes and that it's a little calm, mm -hmm. which is why you'll notice on the food apps after you order your food, there is a tick mark that comes yes. like that and there's a shing. It's always there. So that shing is the one that tells us, oh, I, 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 I ordered well. Mm. You are paying money to them to give you the food. But they have used the formula to help you feel that. So that is what you get addicted to and that's when you come back again and again Love because that. even that shing is like yes i did it in school we had remember when we had school mm. every time the period gets over there is a bell yes right so that bell is a sound which is the ending of one mm -hmm. and the beginning of another so powerful right? and you can also take all of these in your daily life right mcdonald's has it right Ring the bell when you, you go back so happy, true. which is why corporates use this, organizations use it as well. They have the photo of the employee on the walls, right? Uh, employee of the month, yeah. they have that, yeah. right? So there's a photograph. Mm. Ring if you had a good time with us, mm. right? Our brain loves it. So true. You talk, right? you, you talk so much also about frequency yeah. and vibration. Right. W w what does that mean? So, uh, Nikola Tesla many years ago said that uh, every thought that you think is vibrating at a certain frequency in your brain, right? And uh, the stronger the intention, the stronger the thought, that is what will determine your ability to release it into the world, into the universe. And the reason, and there is a huge amount of science, so, which, so even when we do meditation, right? Mm. So the frequencies of uh, meditation, which uh, I learned from this wonderful lady called Kelly Howell, is that the binaural beats, right, have the ability to carry subconscious messages. So there are times when I can do it, I can achieve X amount of money and this mm -hmm. and that. The conscious mind is so strong. Right? It'll tell you what rubbish goal are you setting, what crap are you writing, this is never going to happen. Right? That is where you go back into meditation. Right. Right? And you use a frequency that bypasses the analytical mind. Mm. Right? Quieten the analytical mind so that you can trust your intuition. Yeah. Because your intuition systematically, life's experiences 
right? They kill your intuition. It's that gut feeling. It, that's why we call it the gut feeling, right? Yeah. Right? And uh, you're afraid to leap, right? Mm. But I teach in my leadership workshops, you know, that guys, leap and the net will appear. It will appear, just go, right? But if, uh, uh, if the mind has and is vibrating at that frequency, you will find those kind of leaders often saying, you know what? I have a feeling about this guy. Let's just hire him. Yeah. But you know, we don't have any data. It's okay. I have a feeling about him. What is that feeling? It's your intuition that's guiding you, right? And that's, these are the kind of people we like to hang out with. There's a so doctor true. who will, you go to a doctor and he says, please do this x-ray, do this blood test and then come back to me. Mm -hmm. Then there's a doctor who says, oh, I see, Acha, this happened. Okay. What did you eat last night? Mm. Acha. Uh, how did you come over here? Was it too much traffic? Acha. Then is, is, have you come with your, is this your partner? Mm -hmm. Acha, acha. I'm so glad that you came with her. Yeah. Let's do something. I know it's a stomach bug, but uh, I have a feeling that if you just go home and just have just little soup and just drink little hot water and uh, come back to me tomorrow mm -hmm. and just take this medicine, you'll feel a little better. Come back to me tomorrow or just call me on the phone. I, I'll, I'll see how you feel. I don't think it's anything serious. You don't have to worry about it. It's the same patient. Mm -hmm. Both the doctors have a very different approach. Mm -hmm. Right? One is going to take a decision only based on data, mm -hmm. on tests and on reports. Mm -hmm. The other is trusting his intuition. Mm -hmm. He's having a conversation. Mm -hmm. He's figured out she's just a little stressed. He has a feeling. Why? That I don't think this is a viral. I think if I just give her this, it might work. Mm -hmm. Right? I have a feeling. Okay, I'll ask you. Who are you going to go back to? Feeling. But, I, but look, look. I'm very much based around intuition. I make all of my decisions on intuition. Good job. I it's a learned skill. Really? It's a learned skill. I, I have, have to learn it. I haven't met one of these guests before that I've had in Mumbai. Not one. And every conversation has been amazing. Because I've had a, either a phone call with them for five minutes or I've just seen from their Instagram that I'm going to get along with them, if I'm honest. I know that's silly, but it's my intuition. I just, I just think it will be okay. There were a lot of people, one of my videos went viral and I said, energy doesn't lie. And I said that you, I just have this feeling when I meet someone, if they have good energy or bad energy, and sometimes they've done nothing wrong to me, it's never like I think they're horrible people. It's just like, yeah, you're nice, but we're never gonna be best friends, you know? And some people said, well, you know, your intuition can be clouded by your thoughts, you know, by your rewiring of when you were a kid, and you know, your intuition isn't always right, and you should always think with your brain, with your facts, and then with your gut. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people, and I'll just give you my example, I've always told my mom for some reason, okay? I know I'm going to be successful. And in school, I got the worst grades. Growing up, I, I studied law and I hated it. I wanted to quit. And I always had a very okay job. I was never high flying, by the way. But I always said to my mom, when I'm older, I know I'm going to be successful. And, you know, my mom is someone who's very much like, I know you will be. But my dad, someone's like, yeah, yeah, prove it to me. You know, he's very different. And so when I told them I'm going to quit my job and everything will be okay, for my dad, I had to have a detailed plan. For my mom, she was like, I trust you. There are a lot of people that will say, you know, if I'm working in a corporate job and I say to the guy, don't worry, I'm going to make this company millions. Or you go to your parents and you say, don't worry, I know I'm going to be successful. Or whatever it is, and you don't have concrete plan, concrete facts, concrete data. It, you're not trustworthy. How can I just trust your gut? Yeah. So at the first level, mm -hmm. you need to do enough homework to be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. So you cannot learn swimming by watching it on YouTube. Yes. You have to go to the pool. You have to hire a trainer. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to learn swimming. Correct. Correct? Mm -hmm. But if your gut feel tells you that, you know what? The minute I learn swimming, it's going to help me in life. Because you never drown in the water if you don't know swimming. You're mm -hmm. going to drown if you stay there. Right? You've got to move it. So taking action is important. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, both can go together, according to me, mm -hmm. right? Trust your intuition. Teach a child to dream. Teach the children to believe in themselves. Teach your children to completely be aware of their intuition. So making that effort is, is very critical to be able to bring into your life mm -hmm. that what is 
that you want and um, uh, the surround sound will always remain for the rest of your life it's never going to go away mm -hmm. yeah so uh, if you're moving jobs you you're moving jobs because you don't get along with your boss or mm. boss said xyz therefore i'm going somewhere else how can you ensure that somebody like this will not you will not find again yeah right so it is you who has to continuously work with yourself to be able to find that balance mm. in you right and can so, you manifest anything um i think um many of my clients have been able to manifest a lot of things like that what? they wanted to do right it has a lot to do with with money right really yeah. so you can manifest money yeah how much you want yeah yeah okay so, what if i want to manifest 10 million pounds so if you keep something that is so far away okay. that's a long term goal right right but manifestation is not actually living in la la land mm -hmm. it is real yes it has to be realistic so if you are earning i would say 1 million pounds right now i would rather that for next year you kept a target for you which was achievable right so given the economy given the time that you are in right now so what will be the correct figure for you is it going to be 1.5 million is it going to be 2 million it cannot be 10 million in one year it is not even practical right keep that as a long term goal for yourself and that's a good thing okay not to worry right because 10 million is so far away and if you reach you will forget that when you made 1.5 when you made 1.2 or when you made 3 it's not good enough mm. and that is when people give up right this is whatever i done so i was sweet. at 1 million last year now i'm at 1.5 million i hardly grew this is not called a growth this is useless growth no it's not mm. you grew mm. that is what is important think about how you need to innovate how you need to get going are you understanding technology do you are you up to speed with the accounts mm. your brain is like chat gpt seriously it is right what are you putting in that is the answer you're going to get yeah. so the questions you ask yourself are more important than the ones you ask chat gpt ask yourself the right questions mom right that's more important because if you don't do that then yes you will pick up answers from here there there'll be a glitch in the algorithm <laughs> so you got to set the algorithm correct right and goals help us to do that goals help us to keep going they help us to keep swimming i right? i really don't want our time to end i i feel <laughs> like i could literally talk to you for hours and i'm going to be calling you. you all the time now you you you're, you're going to regret coming on this podcast but i love it i love it thank you thank you one thank piece you. of advice you could give anyone at the moment who is struggling with joy a joy right there is joy all around you hmm there's joy inside of you there is joy in everything that the divine one has created if you look for it you will find it so right? true i love that thank you honestly thank you. so much thank you. you have taught me you so an incredible much. amount <laughs> and i'm just so excited that we've now connected so thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you thank you so, so much, much for having me it's a pleasure to be here thank you everyone and thank you so much for listening and watching this podcast Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could please press the follow, like and subscribe button, it would really mean the world to me.